All right, so now we got to set the valve clearance on this thing, and I already know there's like next to none because I already checked it. But how we're going to do this is, and this is per the book, uh, per the manual, we're going to rotate it. At least try to. Okay, the exhaust comes open. Okay. In, okay, so you see the valves up? That's the intake stroke. Okay, now it's coming up. That's the compression stroke. That's top dead center of the compression stroke right there when both the valves are fully seated and the pistons all the way up. Now the book says to go a quarter inch past that. So I got my dial calipers here and you can see it's set to, well, close enough, a quarter inch. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate it down about a quarter inch past top dead center and I don't know exactly why they want to do this but that's what we're going to do because that's what the book says to do so right there so we got it a quarter past top dead center on the compression stroke so now what we're going to do is both of these valves are closed and they're sealing up, they're grabbing sealing a lot better than they were before but um we're going to check it so on this motor the intake valve is five thousandths to seven thousandths of an inch um, in this setup right here how it is five thousand to seven thousandths of an inch and the exhaust port is nine thousandths to eleven thousandths of an inch so I'm just gonna set it to six thousandths and uh, ten thousandths so right now we have five thousandths, point zero, if you can see that, point zero zero six. Okay, so this is the six thousandths, so this is what I'm going to set it to. So we're pushing down on it, and it has no valve clearance at all. It won't even go in there. And you can see, if I put it in there, like if I push down on it, stick it in there, it will not go. It is not going in there, and I know it's kind of dark in there, kind of hard to see, but trust me, it's not going in there. So, we're going to have to take them out and grind them on the, the um, workbench, or, you know, grind them with the end of them with a Dremel. Um, you can take the material from either the push rod or the valve, but I wouldn't recommend doing it from the push rod because... That's more permanent. Obviously, if you mess up the valve or if it gets worn, you can replace it. But the push rod, you got to tear the whole motor back down to get to it. So, we got a ten thousandths here. Let's see what we got. Nothing. Nothing at all. Yeah, see? It's, it's hanging open. See? Nothing. So... We're gonna have to grind these valves. Now I want to I want to tell y'all be careful when you do this. Make sure you have everything set up perfectly, and make sure you know you don't let that valve get caught in a bench grinder because uh, if you destroy that valve, you're gonna be pissed after doing all that lapping and grinding and you know doing all that kind of stuff. So make sure you just nick it, just roll it and nick it. And I'm gonna take y'all over to the bench grinder here, and we're gonna see if we can get this thing ground right. But um. I need to double check all this and make sure it's good before we do that. But let's head over to the bench the bench grinder and let's get these things ground. All right, so we're over at the bench grinder and excuse all the trash around here, all the stuff in the background. But um, we're at the bench grinder and I have the intake valve here. Now be extremely careful when you do this. Support it and just nick it. I'm telling you, just nick it. Do not let it get caught up in there. Bend it nick any other part of it just grind the stem right here the flat spot where it meets the um push rod right here just grind that down a little bit and what i'm going to do is i'm going to grind it and go check it grind it and go check it grind it and go check it and then we're going to check back um when i got them perfect and we're going to see what it looks like then because i'm not going to keep running back and forth obviously so let's get this thing ground
gently do it. I mean, do it a little bit at a time, because if you take too much off, you're screwed. And try to keep it as parallel as possible. Better go check that. Alright, now I have the exhaust valve here. And a squash bug on top of my grinder. A little at a time. So the exhaust valve is good so now we're going to go back over to the workbench and we're going to check them and you're going to see they're good now all right so now we're going to check the valve clearance here valve lash we got uh ten thousandths of an inch right here And it fits and it's good. Just a tiny bit of resistance here. On the exhaust valve. And then we got 11 thousandths here. Is it? Yeah. Pushing down. And it's tighter, but we got 11 thousandths here. And that's the upper spec for this. And then let's try 12 thousandths. I got them a little bit looser than I wanted to, more loose than I wanted them to be, but uh, that's 12 thousandths and that didn't go in there. So it's within spec, so we're good. I mean, it should close up a little bit once it um, you know, works its way down the seat. It, once I run it a while, it's gonna, they should close up just a little bit, I'd imagine. Um, but that one's good. That one's within spec. So now we're going to go over to the other one. And we got seven thousandths and eight thousandths here. Seven thousandths was the upper of the spec. And that one's just a tiny bit looser than I would have liked. But um, like I said, eight thousandths is not going in there. And seven thousandths is perfect, like you know, you just saw it. So that one's within spec, so it's good. Like I said, make sure you know, um, don't go crazy because you're gonna screw yourself if you go crazy with that, you know, with the grinder. Um, you could really mess it up, and then you're gonna have to replace the valve. So make sure you go in a circular motion so that you get a good even grind on that. But now we have to put these valve springs back on here. So we need to put these valve springs back on here. So this valve spring goes in here. Um, and this one... Goes in here. All right, so there's a trick to getting these valve springs in here. And um, if you all remember from the beginning of the video, or if this ended up being too long and I just split it up or whatever, I went and rented this from uh, Auto Parts Store, and yeah, this thing isn't gonna work on here. So we have a trick that I'm gonna show y'all. All right, so the trick for putting these valve springs back in here is zip ties so we're going to use these zip ties 
and we're gonna compress this spring and then we're gonna zip tie it compressed and stick it in there and then we're gonna cut the zip ties out. So let me go over to the bench vise so we can compress this thing down and you're gonna have to have a bench vise to do this but uh, we're gonna get this thing compressed and get them in there. All right, so now we're at the bench vise here and I have the exhaust valve spring in my hand. So we're gonna compress this thing down. And I hope this works well, it should. Be careful with these stupid springs because uh, you don't want it in your eyes. You don't want it to sling out and go right in your eye, obviously, so. Just like that. So be careful when you do this. I'm probably gonna have to compress it down pretty far. Wow, this spring is so weak. Don't even need the vise. Wow. Okay, well. Now you can see it's compressed. That probably needs to be a little bit stronger. Alright, so my little light just died on me here, but uh, you get the idea. So we're going to go put this back in the... Um, back in the motor now and we're gonna do the other for the other spring. we're gonna do the same for the other spring and we're gonna put this thing back in the motor now alright so we got this thing lit up here so y'all can see it um you can see the springs are in there and I mean this trick works perfectly see it just compresses them just like that and you don't have to mess with the stupid tool and you don't have to buy the tool if you don't have it so it just goes in there just like that and this is the whole reason I took this apart was because uh my old keepers like this, they wore out. The center group was worn out. So I got the two new ones for the exhaust valve right here. And then I already put the new one on, but um, it's this little keyhole keeper right here. And uh, that goes on here. Here, I'll show y'all. Come out of there. See, it's got like a keyhole, so this just goes on there like that and it holds it on there just like that so you can see how easy it is to do with these springs on here but um it's going to be very fidgety for me to get those other little retainers on in here i'm not going to bore y'all so i'm going to have to fish them up in here and then we're going to cut these uh, zip ties off and make sure you plug these oil ports right here because if you drop one of these down in there you are going to be so mad all right, so I got this one in here. Um, I didn't want to film it because if those little stupid little things fell out again, I would be um, sitting here for a while. But on this one, I can show y'all. You got the keyhole right here. Okay, there it's on. Now we're gonna cut it. This is gonna be really hard to see. Let me get a close-up here. Alright, that's as close as I'm going to be able to get y'all. But make sure you pull the little keyhole part and see there it goes again. It's a miracle these things stay together when they're running. It really is. Okay, the keyhole is off again. Alright, there. It's on. It's right where it needs to be. All right, so now we're gonna take this, and there's the zip tie. Okay. And then we're gonna rotate it around. Well, I might pull this out. Go ahead and pull that other broken piece out. And I'll see if we can rotate it without popping it off. There it is right there. Cut. 
Cut it. Well, and pull it out. Ah. And there it goes, and it's on. All right, that little, it needs to get over more, so I gotta grab it here. Okay, it's good. All right, so they're back on. Just make sure you get any of the um, zip tie gunk out of here, um, little pieces of plastic and whatnot. Make sure you get them out of there, so. That is a super easy trick on how to get these uh, valve springs back on here. And you know, that stupid tool, the big C-clamp tool, you don't even need it. You just need zip ties. And you can pop them off with a screwdriver and pop them back on with a zip tie. So you don't need any special tools, really. Um, unless you don't want to waste zip ties. You know, you do this every single day. But if y'all are watching this, you don't do it every single day. So, All right, y'all. Thanks for watching. If y'all enjoyed this video and it helped y'all out and it blew your minds, make sure to give me a big thumbs up down below. And don't forget to check the links in the description while y'all are down there because I'll put links to everything you saw me use in this video. Also, while y'all are down there, make sure you comment and subscribe for more videos of me working on this thing in the future. And so that you get notified when I post a new video, make sure you hit the little bell next to subscribe. That way you get notified when I post new videos of me working on this tiller. Later.